Hello and welcome to AI Unlocked with Intel Core Ultra. In this series, we'll interview creators from across Canada about their artistic process, technology, and what's possible with AI. Ashling Murphy is an award-winning culture critic and journalist based in Toronto. She's written for outlets like the Toronto Star, Intermission Magazine, and the CTV Toronto, with additional bylines at Next Magazine. Hey, Ashling, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Talk to me a little about, you know, your process. How do you generate the initial ideas? Yeah, I mean, I really love to map out all my ideas as much as I can. So sometimes that looks like maybe finding a keyword to a story I'm writing. You know, if I'm, if I'm reviewing a play and I'm trying to describe the lighting, I might go look for different words that could describe light. I mean, if I'm trying to describe costumes, I might think of different ways that I can describe fabric or describe colors or things like that. Like I love to sort of outline how either a show or a project maybe looks or feels. And I feel like that gives me better access into writing about it as a journalist. It's also always interesting to hear people's thought process and how they get into the rhythm of mm -hmm. doing what they do. And I know that you know writing involves a lot of experimentation with language, with narrative, like just like you've talked about. So talk to me a little about exploring the different styles and the themes and the structure and how you build that atmosphere for your work. A way that this kind of comes up, so I review pretty much every play musical in Toronto and you know, that tends to be several a month and I often am kind of thinking, okay, how do I make sure this doesn't sound repetitive? How do I make sure I'm not mm. using the same word every time, even though I might think it's the right word, but you know, if someone's reading all of my reviews, they may notice, hey, Ashling, learn a different word. <laughs> so I'll often use like thesaurus tools and, and maybe word generator tools to maybe not write those words for me, but at least give me an idea to think of other words that might get the same idea across. One that comes up for me a lot is captivating. So I'll often uh, look up different alternatives to the word captivating for reviews. It's, I think, the one that maybe comes up most frequently. Sounds like, you know, you almost feel in Debtor to your audience to make mm -hmm. sure that you deliver on the expectations yeah. that they have, right? Yeah, I mean, every anything I'm writing about is a completely new experience. It's a completely new artistic or cultural phenomenon. And as a writer, I want to make sure that I'm honoring that by making sure that the writing about it is completely fresh and completely new. And during the process of crafting your piece, right, what are some of the preferred techniques or tools that you use in refining the content that you're putting out? I've been known to use Grammarly before as a journalist who writes for several different publications. These publications will have different style guides and for the most part I'm okay at keeping those style guides in my head but for things like you know does this publication use an Oxford comma does this publication use Canadian English versus American English you know do they want book titles and play titles in italics or underlined or quotation marks for things like that I've found that programs like Grammarly can really help me optimize whatever I'm writing for the correct style guide <laughs> As a reader, you wouldn't expect that the person who's writing the article has to navigate these landscapes mm -hmm. to be able to deliver. You just take it for granted and, and your expectations are set because I read it here, I read it every week mm -hmm. and you know that expectation is just set in your mind. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that you faced with your writings and, and how have you overcome them? Yeah, I mean, a, a big part of my job tends to be pumping out lots of stories in a week. It, and often when you're writing about culture, if, you know, if it's a week where I'm writing about music all the time or theater all the time, keeping it fresh and keeping it from going stale can feel like a bit of a challenge. So for me, it's often, you know, first looking at the thing that I'm writing about picking out what's unique about it, what's unique about this singer or their lyricism, what's unique about this playwright. And then for me as a journalist, it's my job to then think about how I can capture those different projects using words, maybe varying my sentence length, changing how I structure a paragraph. Again, sort of honoring the uniqueness of arts and culture with my writing, which I think is really important. You know, you've had a lot of experience in your career so far. What would you, what would be your word of advice to aspiring journalists? What's the key piece of advice you would offer them so that, you know, they learn from the, the mistakes that you've made and, and I don't know, you've evolved over time. When you started your career, the way you wrote then is definitely probably not the way you write now. Mm -hmm. So you've had time to build and nurture your craft. What's the advice you would give to the next generation as they learn from you? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that's helped me most as a journalist, I'm still quite young. I still, in some ways, consider myself an emerging journalist. Mm -hmm. 
Don't be afraid to read other people's work. Don't be afraid to soak in other people's styles, almost like a sponge. How does this writer capture an, an atmosphere? How does this writer use the texture of language to evoke a feeling or a mood? It takes time and it, it definitely takes craft, but the better you get at sort of synthesizing other writing, the better you'll get at creating your own writing as well. I think those skills really go hand in hand. I like the fact that you said texture because texture of words, because that really, really just builds a rich picture in my mind because words can be very potent. Absolutely. Depending on the context in which they're used. Mm -hmm. So how important is the right technology when you're creating so that your applications, you know, deliver efficiently? A way that this comes up sort of frequently is obviously we're in Canada where we're often working in both English and French. Mm -hmm. I mostly speak English, but I have sort of a working knowledge of French. But that being said, I often find myself relying on translation apps and, and different sort of translation technologies to make sure that I fully understand what's being said, but also so that I fully understand how I can then summarize or, or synthesize what's being said. In terms of like the technology that I'm using, it's again, it, it kind of goes back to texture. It's figuring out how I can capture the essence of maybe something in French while still making it make sense in English without sounding like a, like a clunky translation or an incorrect translation. Everywhere you look, everything is getting that AI spice put into it. <laughs> and as you can imagine, Intel has just released an AI-enabled processor. So increasingly, AI is present in content creation and editing, as you've just talked about. Have you experimented with AI tools? So I work as the senior editor of a theater magazine in Toronto. And so that often means that I'm not only editing people's words, but I'm working with images as well. And an interesting problem that's sort of come up over the past couple of years, um, and that AI has actually been incredibly helpful to solve. Often when you're dealing with either actors' headshots or even production shots from a show, there'll maybe be like a, a plain black background or a plain white background. And before the emergence of things like AI technologies, particularly in apps like Canva, expanding that background was really, really hard. It would often make the photos unusable if I needed to expand them to maybe fit on a, on a web page or in an Instagram post. Mm -hmm. What was once maybe a half an hour job is now like a you know, 10 second job. And it's, it's not taking away from the quality of the photo or the art in any way, but it's making it more usable for our audience, which I found incredibly helpful. For anybody, who works, getting a few minutes back in your day <laughs> for a task, for any task at all is a blessing. So I totally agree with you on that one. So now looking ahead, right? Uh, how do you envision collaboration between AI and, and writing in the future? Yeah, I mean, it's been super interesting to see how different AI tools have emerged, even in things like email platforms. I'm someone who is so typo prone. Any editor who's ever edited me has said, Ashling, you have typos all of the time. Please, <laughs> please stop writing so quickly and have fewer typos. And I found that, you know, since email clients and word processors have started to import AI technologies, those typos are fixed a little more thoughtfully and and correctly than they might have been before. Uh -huh. so, so it's not a case of autocorrect, completely misunderstanding what I was trying to say, but it's a case of, oh, that word that I spelled egregiously wrong because I was working too quickly is now spelled correctly without me having to worry about it going in print or going online and having to be something that I fixed. So, you know, it's always good to double check and make sure that the AI is doing it correctly. But for the most part, I've actually found that to be a really helpful part of my job on the day to day. So you just had AI become your personal assistant? Kinda, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Intel recently launched Intel Core Ultra processors. These are processors that are designed with AI in mind. Wow. Just imagine a device that's already built for AI working with an application that's already designed for AI. So I'd like to show you an example of how this comes to life. Great. Copilot in Windows complements your capabilities with intelligent assistance and relevant answers. Kicking off the writing process, summarizing emails and drafting responses, getting inspiration for creative projects. Yeah, that's definitely something that'll be useful for my work as an editor. That's super cool. Awesome. Good to hear. It's been nice chatting with you, Ashley. Yes, you too. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Intel Core Ultra is available at Best Buy.